Um, and then another another area of interest and, and one that's been consistently emphasized uh, by this administration um, is kind of the idea of transit and rail. So with ridership drops and consequential decreases in, in revenue due to COVID-19, the financial situations for many transit agencies has, has been extremely dire. Um, despite these drops in revenue, services still need to be provided for those using the services. So many of those are essential workers and essential workers and those do not have any other options for transportation. So they've you know, kind of been stuck in this catch-22. Um, and additionally, they're gonna be critical for the economic recovery for many regional economies. You know, the, the amount of that working from home uh, will remain as a standard kind of remains to be unseen, but everyone that has stopped using transit cannot, uh, you know, when, when returning from work from home cannot start driving again um, because there will be, pretend, you know, serious potential problems for, for congestion. Um, so transit's going to play a, a critical, crucial role in regional economic recovery. Um, the American Public Transit Association uh, kind of recently said um, that the recent inclusion of, of you know, in, in Joe Biden's proposed uh, $1.9 trillion uh, stimulus bill, he, he did include $20 billion in that for uh, transit agencies. And in addition to the $14 billion that the industry received in the last stimulus bill, it's actually two billion more than the agency was originally looking for. So this signals strong support from this administration for transit agencies, and uh, this will hopefully allow agencies to hold off from massive cuts, but also uh, kind of put them in the position to have the resources they need to to provide optimal service as things start returning to somewhat of a normal. Um, you know, and as many of you know, Joe Biden is a big supporter of Amtrak, and uh, there's many you know stories about how he used to ride it back and forth between Delaware and DC, and he didn't get the nickname Amtrak Joe for no reason. Um, in Biden's infrastructure plan, one the line that really sticks out is the sparking of the second great railroad revolution and his, his nominee uh, for secretary of transportation seems to share similar support. Um, many areas have lost service in recent years and could benefit from the restoration of service, especially rural uh, and other areas where, you know, long distance driving um, may be the only option due to a lack of regular air, airplane service, uh, but it can also expose um, otherwise isolated areas to tourism and, and boost their economies in the process. Um, additionally, modernizing and, and updating the rail systems seems to have them operate, uh, you know, and <clears throat> excuse me, seem, systems to have them operate more efficiently uh, as a main goal and one with um, you know significant economic implications. So that 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 means cutting down on commuting costs, reducing congestion, uh, the env environmental benefits of reducing emissions, and among many others. So, um, you know, the rail system does, you know, provides uh, significant benefits by connecting large metro areas and then helps those metro areas uh, retain and expand their appeal to both businesses and, and professionals and workers as they continue to grow, um, but also provides those same benefits for, for mid to smaller cities, helping them continue to grow and connecting more rural areas to the rest of the regional and national economies in the country. So, uh, however, you know, as these ideas for investing in transit are in rail are, are discussed, it's always crucial to uh, analyze the economic merit of, of these policy uh, ideas. So what are the long-term economic and demographic impacts? Thinking about how they impact things like labor access, commodity access, um, economic impacts of changes to emissions or safety improvements, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, and more in the near term, thinking about the the struggles that transit and, and rail are facing um, due to COVID-19, but also the crucial role that they're going to play in regional economic recovery. And then long term, thinking about all of these positive uh, effects um, for the for the long term health of our national economy and making sure that we're evaluating uh, the economic merit of, of these developments moving forward, because it seems to be a focus of this new administration. Um, so, you know, I've, I've done a lot of talking now, and I'd, I'd love to kind of think about a uh, hypothetical, um, one of these policy developments uh, by showing you a brief model demonstration. Um, we'll be decreasing the commuting costs by about 1% uh, in the Chicago metro area. Uh, the origins, uh, you know, of this simulation will be for um, Chicago and Midwest. The destination will be Chicago. So 
by de decreasing the commuting costs um, from the Chicago area to the Chicago area and then the Midwest region to Chicago, uh, and then also including an investment into that infrastructure improvement. So um, again, this is with a hypothetical model with um, no real data. This is strictly for the purposes of simulation, so it should be taken with a big grain of salt. Um, that being said, I'll jump into the model demo. Give me one brief moment to get the demo. Up. So again, this is the home screen of the Remy Transite model. Um, each, uh, you know, each Remy model comes with a national baseline forecast, um, and then, as I did show before. Uh, we've been working with the University of, of Michigan's um, research center on qualitative economics to include their most updated forecasts to reflect uh, the most current information and economic data um, due to the changes happening from COVID-19. So that is the forecast I'll be using for the simulation. I have this run uh, ahead of time just to, to you know, save, save some time. So again, we'll just review some of the inputs that I had previously described. So we decreased the commuting costs from the Chicago uh, MS area to Chicago, so that's people kind of commuting within that same region. Um, and then also people commuting from the Midwest region to Chicago. We decreased those commuting costs uh, by 1% um, from the years of 2021 out to 2060. Uh, and this, we use the lag market share response. So that's thinking, you know, the, the immediate benefits of the commuting costs will not be seen right away and the economy is going to take the in time for the markets to adjust. Maybe think about this way as, as some type of public private partnership show. Um, there'll be a hundred million dollars of investment in these two years for the project in the Chicago metro area. And then an additional um, 100 and 100, so 200 total uh, million dollars of investment in the Chicago area here uh, for, the, for the construction of the project. Um, and then normally we'd come here and run the simulation. I've already done that just to save some time for the purposes of this demo. Uh, so this again is the transportation summary. So you see here um, some initial, uh, you know, this, this negative here for in, total, in terms of total employment in the Chicago area is kind of after the construction has subsided. Um, there's the initial spike in employment here, and then as that construction project goes away, uh, it decreases again, but then as, as the benefits of the project start to uh, illustrate, um, that employment uh, then starts to increase again. Um, so you see positive effects for both, you know, labor force, um, you know, relative delivered price decreases. Uh, we can start looking at these things in a bit more detail here. So, you know, improvements in commodity access index, a bit marginal. <clears throat> improvements in labor access index, um, as, as well as reductions in production costs, as we'll see in the Chicago area. as well as um, decreases in delivered price for the Chicago area. Um, and we can start looking at what this looks like, not only for the Chicago area, but also the Midwest region, and then um, the rest of the US as well. So in terms of employment and population, again, this is the same um, phenomena as the, as the project, uh, the, you know, the initial benefits and employment of the construction of the project, uh, which then decrease as the project ends, but then over the long term, uh, you see the benefits that the project um, will have, you know, by by reducing commuting costs on terms of employment and population for the region. See how that looks differently for uh, the Midwest. There's not that decrease really um, in in terms of employment from the initial uh, decrease in, in the construction phase of the project. Also enjoys the long term benefits. Um, and it's a bit of a different story for the rest of the U.S., which does maybe reflect some uh, 
comparative advantage that Chicago and a little bit of the Midwest region does have now. So GDP and output increase over time. Similar stories for personal income and disposable income. <clears throat> and we can look at, um, you know, employment by industry as well. Um, see what industries are most impacted and whether it be the Chicago area, uh, look at the rest of the U.S. Retail sees some significant benefits. general increase in population over time as well, um, especially in Chicago. Similar story in the rest of the, you know, the Midwest region and a bit of a different story for the rest of the U.S. In terms of labor force, we also see um, you know, in increases across the board over time. Similar story for the, the Midwest region. You can look at how population might change by, by looking at the region. Start year of the project here. Let me go up. 10 years. See some changes that have, have happened over that period of time. Um, and then, uh, you know, as I've shown in, in the previous demos for the, the previous days, we can get really detailed um, in breaking down all of these uh, economic indicators, looking at things like GDP profile. If you want to look at employment effects by industry. Comprehensive look at the trade profile of the regions and see how that's changing. And also get really detailed, uh, you know, demographic effects. Think about how the population might be changing in the Chicago region over over the the timeline of the project, all the way out to the year of 2060. And you know, this is where you start thinking about. Um, what parts of the project may be resulting in population, if any? Um, how is this, you know, what are the reasons behind increases to em employment and, and changes to GDP, et cetera, et cetera? So uh, that, that's kind of a brief overview of how we might think about, you know, a, a, a generally speaking, again, take this with a, a grain of salt. It's a hypothetical model with no real uh, project data, um, but thinking about uh, some, some possible ways that some of these policies might look like. Uh, in the economy moving forward and then how we might approach them in the Remy Translate model.